You know, I was speaking to my brother today and uh, he told me a story about when he was in school. He was probably a very young boy. Um, I would say probably age 10 or less. And his teacher asked, maybe he was teaching them all about Australia or something to do with that this day. And he was asking them, can anybody name an animal, an unusual animal perhaps, but doesn't necessarily have to be, but an animal that is indigenous to Australia and not found elsewhere, preferably. And as we all know, Australia has a wide variety of fauna and flora which aren't found in the rest of the world because as we're told um, Australia was unknown to the rest of the world for so long there was no land bridge and there was no uh, connection to the place there was no sailors there was no migration there was no interaction uh, there was no nobody getting in nor nobody getting out of this place so um, anyway we'll I don't mean to get into that. I'm not trying to sidetrack myself. I'll continue with the story. That's what we're told, and that's what we'll assume to be true from now because it doesn't change the effect of the story too much. Uh, he went around the class, this teacher, asking everybody, and they said, you know, kangaroo, koala bear, kookaburra, and I can't really think of too many others, but you can imagine by the time in a class of around, who knows, 25, 30 people, 30 little boys, uh, he... Uh, was one of the last and so he was going oh, what will I say I, I, I'm terrified now I'm going to look stupid I won't be able to think of anything and um, so he's racking his brains and the teacher comes to him and he goes um, uh, uh, penguins actually sir penguins and uh, the teacher goes ha, what are you talking about penguins boy you know uh, I said Australia not Antarctica uh, you must be some kind of uh, a slow witted dim witted idiot are you an idiot Right. And um, he says, no, no, sir. Um, you know, uh, I mean, technically speaking, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, Antarctica is owned by Australia. They have territory there. So, you know, uh, you know, in a manner of speaking, you can find penguins in Australia. Now, uh, the teacher goes up to the board and he says uh, he pulls down the uh, sort of blind over the board, which is a map, pulls it down and he says, look, look at that. You stupid boy, look how far away Australia is uh, from Antarctica. I mean, do you think the penguins swim all the way from there up to Australia? Uh, so, you know, he uh, suitably admonished him. And, uh, of course, everyone else in the class then was laughing and going, yeah, he's really stupid, isn't he? Like, And, um, you know, this is how they get you, you know. Um, school isn't there to uh, to learn stuff, you know. It's there to be told what to think. And then if you only... Uh, think and say what everybody else is taught to think and say, then you're clever. And if you say something that everybody else doesn't think is true or hasn't been told is true, then you're not. You're stupid or insane, crazy, certainly worthy of mocking, you know. You're a social outcast and that's what people are terrified of. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how they break you. Uh, they don't teach you anything nearly as strong in school as the lesson that you'd better make sure that whatever you're thinking is exactly the same as what everybody else is thinking because if it's not you're going to be out on your own isolated everybody else is going to be a group they're going to be pointing and laughing at you and you're going to be uh, you're going to have no friends you're going to have no respect you're going to be lonely and upset and you're going to be uh, ashamed of yourself you're going to feel shame you're going to say what's wrong with me I wish I could be you know complete and whole and res worthy of respect and um, worthy of love and that's that's how they break you you're not getting love unless you swallow their lies so they show you banana and they say this is straight and you go but but sir i don't understand it's not what and then you know you get beaten over the head <coughs> knocked on the head hello mcfly hello excuse me for coughing you know uh, they're calling you thick all the time get that through your thick skull that's not bent you're bent boy you know, and I won't get into that, but that's another way that they, uh, that's how they break you. You know, terrible, cruel people. And the people who are teaching it, they're not cruel either. They're just being made that way because they were broken in their youth. So the guy's pulling down this map and he's actually saying, by pulling down this map, I'm abdicating my knowledge to somebody else's better knowledge. I assume that there's some other man somewhere, he's probably even dead, who drew this map and he knows better than me. How the hell does that guy know? The teacher now, how far away Australia is from. Antarctica, because somebody told him. What if I told you Antarctica doesn't even exist? No such thing. That's my theory. Yeah. And in a manner of speaking, <coughs> Antarctica is Australia. They're one and the same thing. Ooh, I shouldn't have said that. 
but that's for another time. Um, but what neither of them knew is that uh, from Australia, what we call Australia now, yeah, you can see penguins, sure, they swim around. And maybe they do swim up from Antarctica. And they certainly swim around Australia. And there's plenty of places you can go and see them. You can stand uh, in Melbourne and uh, you can uh, go someplace, uh, you know, to the coast and you can have a look at the penguins. So turns out the teacher was wrong. He was dead wrong, right? But he th thought he knew better because he was taught that uh, you have to be uh, in Antarctica and penguins just like cold, snowy places. And he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know that and he doesn't know anything else. He just knows what he's been told and he thinks he's clever and he's not. And then he mocks other people, hoping that he'll stay clever. And the only way he can feel clever is by mocking a little boy and breaking his spirit and breaking his soul by getting every other little boy to mock him. And the lesson that every other little boy learns is I better find out what everyone else thinks they know first. And then I better agree with them. And I better agree strong, as strongly with the person who seems to have the most uh, social standing and then maybe people will like me and I'll never, I'll never experience, hopefully, the kind of mocking that that uh, other boy uh, got that day. And it divides us. It makes everyone suspicious of each other. And it makes everyone think that the other person is out to mock them and that they need to stay in the group and hide in the group and then there's strength in that. Now, there's strength in you. There's strength in you believing in what you know and you can't know anything anyway. So the strength then in, in letting go and realising nothing can be known for certainty. And the reason nothing can be known with absolute 100% certainty is that you're always just perceiving things that are in a world that you were put into and you don't know where you came from and you don't know where you're going. You've just been thrown into the water and nobody's even told you on the way down, hey, by the way, here's some pointers on how to swim or here's how to orientate yourself. Here's how to orient, orient yourself towards the light or not towards the light. Here's how to swim east, west, up, down, north, right, uh, north, north, south, left, right. Nobody gave you any pointers. So when, okay, when you're trying to figure out where you are and what things are, even if you're standing on something, you're only just using your eyes, your ears, uh, what you can smell, what you can taste, what you can touch. And you're trying to interpret the things around you and make determinations as to what those things are. But you can only describe those things. You can only write about them. You can only hear them. You can only vocalize them. You can only touch them. And then it's up to your brain to interpret them. You don't know what those things are. I mean, so, so many people are always saying stuff like, um, well, they say, who are you? And they say, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm a civil engineer. Is that who you are? No. What happens when you retire? That's why so many people's minds get broken when they retire. They don't know who they are then if they don't have the job to define themselves. You know, that's why so many people who are in inverted commas, uh, out of work or unemployed, when people say, oh, how do you do and what do you do for a living? Uh, that's the first two questions, you know. How are you doing? Or what's your name? And very shortly after that, what do you do for a living? As though that defines them, you know. And people think who work every day and spend most of their time doing something to do with their way of earning a living, that that somehow defines who they are. So who they are, is the job that they do in order to, to support and sustain their physical body. I don't think any Christian would believe in that. Because who you are is something innate inside. It's your soul inside. And all these little souls in hard times, as Mr. Gradgrind used to say in, in that book, Hard Times by Charles Dickens, right? and Mr. Bounderby would come in to say, oh, I'm a self-made man, full of his own pomp, Pride and self-importance, you know. I'm rich. I somehow got a leg up over the rest of you uh, little worms, you know. But the, uh, the idea is to realise that there's strength in just realising I can't know anything with any 100% degree of certainty. Um, and therefore, I'm a soul who believes that. So nobody says, how will I recognise you? Nobody says, well, I'll be the kind person who will display kindness and understanding even to those people who don't seem to deserve it. Nobody describes himself that way. They say, oh, well, you know, I'm this tall or I have this color hair or this, these color eyes. That's not you. You're describing the physical form around you. You're actually making a metaphor of yourself. When you say your name, you're vocalizing yourself. You're not describing yourself. And when you write your name, you're just saying that's me literally. But it's not you literally. So um, what I'd like to say is two things. 
right? I will say the two little morals at the end of this here. One, that's how they break you. That's how they break your mind. They say, uh, no, the banana is straight. You're the one who's bent. And then so you have to bend your mind in order to conform, right? So you have to be with form of the, the false form that they show you. That's how they break your mind. And they keep you busy, 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 busy. Round and round and round and round and round. It's like one of those merry-go-rounds in a, in a children's playground. Right? It's spinning all the time. So you're too terrified to jump off. And you don't know how to jump on either. You've got to really time it right to jump on. But once it's spinning, you're terrified and you just hang on for dear life. Because you're worried about what's going to happen if you get thrown off. Well, don't, don't get thrown off then. Choose your time and jump off. Right? It's a lot easier if you choose how to jump off and you think about how you're going to do it. But it would have been better if you would have been practicing jumping and rolling and thinking about the dynamics of what is the thing that you're on. So they want to keep you distracted so you don't have any time just to slow down and stop and let thoughts percolate and figure out a few things because you're gathering data all the time and that data is no good unless you know how to process it. So you'd better find a way to get some peace, right? get some peace in your life and stop all the madding crowd distracting you and stop all the little uh, ultimately um, unimportant things from crashing around you and into you all the time so that you're constantly being buffeted. You're in a sea and you're being just blown around by the, the wind and the waves are crashing against you and the current's pulling you. You don't know what way you're going. You better find some nice little alcove somewhere where you can sit down and have a good think and figure things out and also realize you'll never know anything for sure. So peace, part of peace is learning to accept that.